talk to God and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me, O Lord. Father, the word that shall comfort, let it be for me. Talk to him. Father, speak to me. Speak to me. That word that will touch my life. That word that will make a difference in my life. Father, speak to me. You've been speaking to me since I came into this place. Speak to me again. God has spoken to some people, even through the praise and the worship, even through the prayer points that have been raised. God, speak to me again. Thank you, Lord. Talk to him. I will not come here just to play. I came here to meet with you. I must meet with you. Speak to me, O Lord. Speak to me, O Lord. Let me hear you clearly. In accents, clear and still. Let me hear you, O Lord. Speak to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let us hear from you. We want to hear from you, O Lord. We will not miss it, O Lord. Speak to each and every one of us. Speak to me. Speak through me, O Lord. Let your name be glorified, O God. Let your name be lifted high. Let everyone know that I had an encounter with you today. From the moment that I stepped in this place to the moment I go out, let a fresh anointing come upon me, a fresh glory, that everyone who sees me when I leave this place will know that I had an encounter with you. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. What is our theme for this month? Beware of hypocrites. Beware of hypocrites. Today is our last Sunday taking that theme. Beware of hypocrites. And we've learned a lot about hypocrisy. And today we'll still learn a little bit more about hypocrisy, about how we too can be guilty. If I ask if there's any hypocrite here, I'm sure many people, I say every hypocrite here, raise up your hand. Very few people will raise up their hand. Very, very few. So let us see whether it is true or it is not true that there are hypocrites in this place. Let us see whether it is true, whether even the person who is talking himself is a hypocrite. Let us see. Who is a hypocrite? I was reading somewhere, and I think I've said it before to one of the services, that a hypocrite is somebody who puts on a mask and pretends to be another person. And, you know, from our, our um, theme, theme, we've seen it. They call the Pharisees. Pharisees are hypocrites. And we've been hearing for the last few Sundays all the things that they do and how the Bible describes them. You know, I think it was last week or the week before, Pastor was talking about burial grounds, cemeteries, tombs that cost millions. You know, the Bible describes people, Pharisees, like whited sepulchers. Sepulchers in those days were big tombs, not just ordinary burial. They just put somebody in six by six. Sepulchers were the big ones. They have them. Pastor was talking about them. Some of them, 60 million naira, big. But the Bible says that the Pharisees are like white sepulchers, but they are filled with dead men's bones. Beautiful on the outside, but what is inside? Rottenness. Death. Dust. As beautiful as those white sepulchers will be, as they may be, they are 60 million, they are 50 million, I'm sure if they gave you 50 million to build a house, maybe in a Korodu, will you not build a beautiful house? Eh? With 50 million. They say, take this land and take this 50 million. Go and build a house in a Korodu. How will the house look? Eh? Will it be a small house? Eh? You build a beautiful house. How many bedrooms? <laughs> Somebody said plenty bedrooms. <laughs> With 50 million. 
Okay. So at least you can build three bedrooms. Four. <laughs> Five, self. Will you be able to invite people to come and visit you? You will invite your friends. Come and visit me. Everybody will be happy. They will say, ah, Angela built a house in Korodu. We will go there. Even me, I will come and visit you. But the Bible describes Pharisees as sepulchers filled with dead men's bones. That place that is in the Koyi Cemetery that they charge 60 million. How many of you want to go and spend a weekend inside that room? You don't want to go. It's 60 million house, so it's beautiful. If you see some of them, in fact, you should go to either a Koyi cemetery or there's another one. I don't know what they call it. Um, no, no, no. This one is at Koyi. Yes. Vault. I mean, <laughs> vault or something. I've been there before. You will see some place. It's glass house. Beautiful glass house. Some have rooms. But how many of you will go and spend weekend in the room there? Not even weekend. Just go and spend two hours to rest and relax. That's how the Bible describes Pharisees. Whited sepulchers, but nobody wants to go inside. Filled with dead men's bones. Inside that house, as beautiful as it is on their side, it's smelling on the inside. That's how the Bible describes anybody who is a hypocrite. Calls Pharisees hypocrites and says that that is what they are like. Be beautiful. When you see them on the outside, you love them. But inside, dead men's bones. Inside, ugly. It's a good thing that we cannot see the heart of each other. But God sometimes gives some people the, the ability to say, ah, the thing you are thinking is not good. But many of us cannot see it. And we know that many people cannot see what is inside our hearts. So we can harbor many things. So if we say, is there any hypocrisy? Ah, no, God forbid. Because I cannot see what is inside. You cannot. That's the poor car too. It's not everybody they open the place for. That place, that glass house in the Koi Cemetery. It's not anybody that can go there. You don't have the key. You didn't pay for it. You don't have receipts. You think you can say, you go to the Koi Cemetery. Ah, my sister died. And I go, please, is that one that I want them to help me bury my sister? Is it possible? Choose that. that that's, they will ask you. They will say, did you buy it? Did you pay for it? And because it looks beautiful on the, the outside. But inside is dead men's bones. Hypocrisy is like that. A hypocrite is beautiful on the outside. Even sometimes nice on the outside. But inside, do you know that some people can be nice to you? And in their hearts, it is something else they are thinking. In their heart, they are thinking of how you are going to fall down. How you are going to just be walking on, you are just going to trip. And when you fall down, that fall down, they will come and say, sorry, oh. Meanwhile, inside, say, God, catch them. Do you know there are people like that? Have you seen people like that before? Hypocrites. Whether we are like that or not, oh, it's a different thing. But we will look at it. Hypocrisy means living a lie. A life that is not true. Living a lie with men and living a lie with God. That's hypocrisy. The life we are living is not true. And we know that it is not true. But we are the only ones who know. Most people, well, some people we know, but most people don't know. In fact, we are one person in one place and we are another person in another place. Hypocrisy does not have to do with congregation or pastor. Pastor, congregation, hypocrisy permeates. Anybody can be a hypocrite. Every day we have pastors, we have congregation members, everybody in hypocrisy. Many people assume that when we talk about hypocrites, we are talking about pastors. We're talking about SU. How many of you know who they call SU? You know SU? Some of you are too young to know SU. Uh, let, put up your hand if you know SU. I will know your age. Put up your hand if you know what, is, what SU means. 
Eh, eh. Brachibuza, you don't know SU. Eh? You don't know. You don't know. Let me see the hands of those who know SU. Eh, eh. Eh, eh. All those people who are 50 and above, maybe even 40 and above, they will know SU. SU is scriptural union. They were scriptural union, eh? Or students' union. No, a scriptural union. And scriptural union was a group in most universities. They were very, very holy, very, very righteous, very pious. So many people did not like them. All those people put up their hand, asked them whether they like S2 people in those days. But then many people felt S2 people were hypocrites. Because fortunately or unfortunately, you know, when you're a hypocrite and people feel you're a hypocrite, they're always looking for how to see you trip. So, of course, we were always looking for their faults. And, of course, it was easy to find their faults. So, many people, when we talk of hypocrisy, we think, oh, pastors, SUs, all those people who sort of behave as if they are righteous. They are the ones who are guilty of hypocrisy. In fact, you hear some people say, oh, pastors, they are hypocrites. Have you heard it said before? Have you heard people say, I can never marry a pastor? Why? They are hypocrites. I lie. Eh? Do I lie? But some people have to marry the pastor. Abisa. <laughs> some people will say, Pastors, I can never do business with them. They are hypocrites. The person calling pastor hypocrite too is what? Hypocrite. Hypocrites are liars. Anybody who preaches one thing and lives another thing is a hypocrite. Many of us, we want to remove the little twig in another person's eye. The big log in our eye, where is it? It's still in our eye. It's hypocrisy. I hear something that they say. Maybe some of you have heard it in this generation. Hmm. And then you will tell me whether this generation is not full of hypocrites. All of us have to be checking ourselves for hypocrisy. How many of you have had this statement? Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you... The senior ones may not have had. Those ones that are 50 and above, they may not know fake it till you make it. Maybe because they have made it. But even then, even if not, many of them don't know fake it till you make it. But the younger ones, do you know fake it till you make it? Uh-huh. We are getting to whether there are hypocrites or there are no hypocrites. What is fake it till you make it? Eh? Fake life. Pretense. Pretend to be who you are not until you become that person you want to be. Pretend to be a big girl until you become a big girl. Pretend to be a big boy until you become a big boy. Pretend. Pretend with the way you dress. Pretend with the way you walk. Pretend with the phone you carry. Pretend. Just continue to pretend. What kind of life is that? Fake life. Hypocrisy. A person pretending to be who he or she is not is a hypocrite. Fake life. Fake it till you make it. If you are here and you have been doing fake it till you make it, remove your handle and be who you are. Because you will see where the Bible says those who are living that kind of life, God is not going to bless them. So some people will fake it till they die. They will never make it. They will just be faking it. And when you are faking it, you live life under pressure. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You see them on Facebook faking it. 
Instagram, faking it. Twitter, Snapchat. TikTok, LinkedIn, even LinkedIn that is professional, they will put there that they got first class and it's fake. You will see people, they will pose in front of somebody's house and it's fake. I'm coming closer to homo. Should I say it? I didn't say it, oh. Sandra, she said it. They will see car outside, S class. Then they will post it. God is good. What, what impression are they trying to give? Fake life. Small girl, big God. One day I went to the market in Idumota uh, and I drove. I parked the car. By the time I came back, I was even afraid. <laughs> I, I was wondering, what is happening? It was a long time ago, maybe about five years ago, so I didn't even understand myself. So they were explaining to me that ah, they are taking pictures that they will post. I said, I don't understand. Post that what? I post that maybe that's their new car. The people who are, all of you who are shouting, hey, have you not taken that kind of picture before? <laughs> Hippo! <laughs> Let us examine ourselves. Let us search our own self. Before we remove the small stick in somebody's eye, let us remove the log in our eye. You pose. That's why I didn't say it. It was she that said it. That's why I said, let me come closer to home. My cousin, his daughter in Canada called her. said, daddy, daddy, I saw our house on the internet. Did we do marriage that I didn't know? He said, marriage. Which kind of marriage? I didn't do marriage. Nobody did marriage. She said, I will send you the picture. Their house in Magodu, some people were doing marriage, and they used their... their the front of their gate, because they have a long driveway that has flowers and everything, and they were posing in front of somebody else's house. And if you saw the picture, you would think it's their house. The way they were posing, all of them, I said, ha! Ah. And they posted it on Instagram as if it is their house. And you said there are no hypocrites in the church. I'm sure all those people belong to Pentecostal church. They don't even go to Catholic or Methodist. They go to Pentecostal. The way I'm looking at them, oh, Fake it till you make it. Hypocrisy. We have to begin to check when you are pushed to do that thing. When your friends say, come, come. Well, yeah, let's, let's tell them for what reason. Is it my car? I will pose with my own car because my own car is coming. But if I continue to fake it, my car may never come home. When I build my house, I will pose with my house. I don't need to pose with another man's house. Everything in life is step by step. Why do you want to pose with a car that you cannot afford? Some people who, are, who even know the owner of the car, they will allow them to enter. Then they will sit down at the steering like this. Fake life. You get on a flight. Business is first class. There's business class. Then there is uh -huh, economy. Some people are going to the back. Their seat is number 79. Eh? Uh -huh, number 90G, the last one. But when they are coming in, they will stop at number one. Mm, quickly, quickly, quickly. Snap. And you know that number one, first class, ah, that one is like a house. Then they will post it. See me. Hypocrisy. Fake it till you, leave, till you make it. Such people will always be flying at the back for the rest of their lives if they are not careful. When you get there, you will leave it. But wait until you get there. 
there is such a, a drive of greed and avarice. It's just driven by, we're driven by greed, by we want to be there when we are not yet there. God will take us there. Let us walk in God's time. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Fake it till you will make it. It's a life of hypocrisy. Anybody can be a hypocrite. Oh. I've started with the pastors. And I'm coming to the congregation. The pastor who pretends to be holier than thou. is a hypocrite. There are people, I know some churches. They say we don't take medicine. That is the, the church's policy. Then some people, when they are sick... They will hide and take medicine. What is that? It's hypocrisy. Come out and take the medicine. Let everybody see you. I'm not feeling fine and I need to take something. So it's not that they, if you don't take, eh, fine. But if you take and you are hiding, it's hypocrisy. And you see, hypocrisy confuses other people. So another person who is sick will say, ah, if Sister Fen or me did not take medicine and she survived, then me too I can survive. I me too I will not take medicine. Meanwhile, Sister Fen or me did what? Then you will now say, I'm not taking because Sister Fen or me did not take. Then you will come and the person will come and die. Did Sister Fen or me not kill the person with hypocrisy? There are many things that hypocrisy can cause. When we pretend to other people that we are not, I mean, that we are who we are not, beginning from pastor, a pastor who preaches, you must not take medicine, you must not take medicine, you must not take medicine, and goes behind to take medicine. What is that pastor? Hypocrite. Hypocrisy exists in so many areas, so many ramifications. There are some people who don't take medicine, and there's nothing wrong with it. There are some people who take medicine. There is nothing wrong with it. But to pretend that you are one and you are not, that is what God does not like. Hypocrisy. Pretending to be somebody that you are not. Who are you when nobody is there? When nobody is there, you have pricked, I don't take medicine, I don't take medicine. When nobody is there, do you take the medicine? Do you hide in the car and take medicine? I don't tell anybody that I don't take medicine. But if I don't take medicine, eh, it's good for me not to take medicine. But if I'm taking medicine and I'm telling people I don't take medicine, it's hypocrisy. And it can even lead to the death of another person who feels, ah, if Sister Shola doesn't take medicine, me too, I'm not going to take medicine. Not knowing that Sister Shola is sneaking and she's taking the medicine. The blood of that person will be on that sister Shola's head. Hypocrisy. Who are you when no one is looking at you? Who are you in your compound? Who are you at work? Are you the same person that we see in church? When we come to your office, will we see the same person? That gentle person in church. That nice sister. That holy sister. That holy brother. That holy pastor. Some pastors... And even congregation. It's inside their Bible they used to collect bribe. As they are collecting the bribe, they are keeping it in their Bible. Some of them even come and pay tight on the bribe. Who are you when no one is watching? There are many people who are civil servants in church, in Pentecostal church. They are workers. They are pastors. But when they are sharing in their office, they do not say, they do not say what? When they are sharing in their office, they do not say what? They don't say no. Some people will say, ah, you know, if I don't take it, they will, they will be offended, they will be this, they will be that. God is watching. As patient as Jonathan said, continue. What does the Bible say about this? Let's just look at one or two scriptures because I want us to also look at what drives hypocrisy. Why are we hypocrites? Let's just look at one or two scriptures. First John 4.20. People who are saying, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. 
First John 4.20. Can, can you quickly put it up? First John 4.20. If a man says, I love God, I hate his brother, he's a liar. If you do not love your brother that you can see, the Bible says, how can you say you love God? You are here. You are hating somebody. You are a hypocrite. God is watching you. Examine yourself today. Don't let it be tomorrow. As we are sitting down here, begin to examine your own life and say, where is hypocrisy in my heart? Because we cannot see it. You cannot see my heart. I cannot see your heart. A few people, God gives them the grace to see into people's hearts. Me, I don't see your heart. You, you, and many of you cannot see my heart. I'm the only one who can search my heart. And that's why the psalm says, try me, O Lord, and see my heart. Help me see my way and see if there be any evil thing in my heart. Search your heart. Let me search my heart. What is it I am doing? Am I hating people and pretending to be loving God? God says, if you cannot love the people you see, how can you say you love me? Me that you cannot see. Hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. Many people, do you know that there are people in church who don't even believe in God? Hypocrisy. I like that man who said in the Bible, he said, Lord, the Lord said, do you believe? When they wanted to do a miracle, he said, Lord, I believe. Help my own belief. That is, I believe, but I'm not sure. There are people who are not sure, but who will not come out and say, Lord, help my own belief. There are people who are coming to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, but they are not sure that God really exists. When they get to another place, the same people will get into an argument. Have you ever seen God? How do you know God really exists? Maybe we are just fooling ourselves. We have to discover those things for ourselves so that we will not be hypocrites. Because it says if you say you love God and you hate your brother that you are seeing, koro koro, you are a hypocrite. Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. We just look at a few scriptures. Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. Uh -huh. If a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, the Bible says he's just deceiving himself. You are not deceiving God. You may be deceiving man, but above all, the Bible says you are deceiving yourself. He's a hypocrite. Luke chapter 6 verse 4. Then I want you to write some scriptures down and then go and read it at home. Luke chapter 6 verse 4. Bola, you have to be very fast. Luke chapter 6, verse 4. Uh -huh. He went into the house of God. He took, he ate, and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone. Are you doing what you are not supposed to do? You are a hypocrite. Mark chapter 7, verse 8. Just quickly. Mark chapter 7, verse 8. What are you doing? Search your heart. Laying aside the commandment of God, they hold the tradition of men. They leave the things that God has said. They hold on to the things that man is saying. is hypocrisy. Yes. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. And quickly, what drives hypocrisy? Why do we want to be somebody we are not? Whether pastor, whether congregation, what is making us to be hypocrites? What is making us to fake it till we make it? What is making us to let people know that I am very holy when we are not very holy? We might be holy, oh, but not very holy. What is driving it? The things that I believe drive is pride drives hypocrisy. Fake it till you make it. You want to be a big girl. You want to be a big boy. The pastor wants to show that I am very holy. I am very, very sound. I am very strong. It's pride. When we move out of pride and we move into humility, this Matthew 6, 1, just read it. When we move out of pride and we move into humility, we'll see that there's no reason to fake anything. There's no reason to pretend. 
But when you want to be proud, or when you are afraid of what people will say if they know the real you, then there is a need to be a hypocrite. Search your heart. What does God say about humility? Let's look at James chapter 4, verses 6 to 10. The things that, that drive humility is mostly pride. Pride. And of course, you are afraid that people will think you are not who you are. You want to belong to a particular circle. You have to fake it. But is that what God says? The Bible says he gives more grace to the he gives more grace. God resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. So as much as one is trying to fake it, the Bible says God is resisting the person. So you are faking it to move into that circle and God is pushing back because it's a fake life. The Bible says God gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and God will lift you up. Let's look at Luke 14, 11 and 1 Peter 5, 8. Luke 14, 11, 1 Peter 5, 8. Quickly, Luke 14, 11, 1 Peter 5, 8. Luke 14, 11. If it's for you are pressing now, you press it very fast. Though. Luke 14, 11. Whoever exalts himself shall be brought down. Mm. Whoever is humble shall be exalted. Live the fake life. Live as you are and let God exalt. 1 Peter 5, 8. Quickly. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is looking for whom he may devour. He is looking for whom he may devour. As long as we are living that life, we are making ourselves open for God to live. He said he will resist us. He will leave us. Satan is looking for who to devour. As we continue to live that fake it till we make it, that life of hypocrisy, we open ourselves up to Satan to devour. And that place that we are thinking we will get there by faking it, we will not reach the place. So may we not be stopped from reaching our destiny because of hypocrisy in Jesus' name. How can we avoid it? Number one, from all what I've said, be humble. Leave all those things. There are many things we, we want to be this, we want to be that, and we will do anything desperately to get there. And we will live a fake life. We will pretend to be who we are not. We have to be humble. We have to stop comparing ourselves with ourselves. Second Corinthians 10, 12. It says that those who compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Where do we compare ourselves with ourselves? On social media. We are looking at this one and we are wanting to be like that. And we are thinking, ah, but this person and I, we left school at the same time. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. What are they? And if a person is not wise, what is he? Eh? Foolish. When you compare yourself with yourself, the Bible says it is a foolish thing to do. People go online and they are looking. How many of you have seen your mates on Twitter, on Facebook, on Snapchat, and you are looking at, ah, eh, what happened? How did she do it? How did she make it? Ah, she's this, she's that. Comparing ourselves with ourselves, the Bible says it is foolishness. When we do that, we tend to hypocrisy. Because when we see them as they look as if they are making it, then which we want to do what? Eh? We want to be like them, comparing our... Meanwhile, if you hear their story, uh -huh. mm. if you hear the real story, you will thank God for where you are. What is the antidote to hypocrisy? Do not be judgmental. That's a problem. Many people are judgmental. And they themselves, they are doing the same thing. The same thing that they are judging people for, they are guilty of it. So when you don't judge people, 
When you keep quiet, if you fall, nobody will talk too much. But when you are judgmental, if anything happens, ah, you say this one, you say what? You say hypocrite. Do not be judgmental. Be gracious to other people. What are the things? Be humble. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Whether you were born the same day, you were born the same minute, you were born in the same hospital, you were born at the same time, you went to the same school, you were in the same class, you went to the same this, you went to the same that. Don't compare yourself with anybody. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for the other person's life. And the Bible tells us that God says, I know my plans for you. They are plans for good and to bring you to an expected end. There's no need to be a hypocrite. There's no need to compare yourself with anybody because God has a place he's taking you to. And if you will humble yourself today and live and be the person that you are, you will get to the place where God is taking you to in Jesus' name. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to talk to God and search our hearts and see if there is hypocrisy, any hidden hypocrisy, any place where there is hypocrisy, let us begin to talk to God. Let us begin to talk to God. You are the only one who will know whether there is hypocrisy, whether there is not. Look at, search your own heart. All these things I've been talking about, search your heart. Whether you are the one who pretends to have what you don't have. Some people will go and borrow clothes to go out to a party. Borrow jewelry, borrow shoe. Why? So that when I reach there, then go take. Search your heart. You use somebody else's car to, to, to pose as if it's your own. Search your heart. You pretend, ah, I'm very holy. I don't do this, I don't do that. Search your heart. In fact, ah, if I just pray, the whole world, everything will happen. I don't need to take medicine. I don't do this. I don't do that. Search your heart. If you know that you are saying you don't do something, and yet you are doing it. Like I said, there are people who don't take medicine. But if you are taking and you are preaching something else, search your heart. You go to work, you carry Bible, and yet you are collecting bribe and putting it inside Bible. Search your heart. Because the place where you are doing it, nobody is there with you. They just know in your office that you carry by. But the people in the church where all of you are praising God together, they don't know. Search your heart. Lord, help us. Help us to be who we truly are. So that you can exalt us. So that you can lift us up. So that you can take us to the place of our destiny. That place of making it so that we get there quickly. Help us, O oh Lord. And you are here today. You are not even born again. You don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. Please let me pray with you. Do not leave this place without knowing the Lord. You are here. You are not born again. Please raise up your hand and let me pray with you. The first step of even coming to know him, the first step of living a life of grace, a life of honesty, a life of integrity, is knowing him. He's calling you today Come, come and fellowship with him. Enter into a new life with me. If you are here, you're not born again, please raise up your hand, let me pray with you. You are here, you are not born again, raise up your hand, I want to pray with you. And if not, let us continue to talk to God and say, Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. Help me in any area where I am missing it. In any area where I am living a life of hypocrisy, Lord, try me. Try me. Let me know you better. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord. We ask for your help. We ask for grace, O oh Lord, that we will live a life of honesty and truthfulness. Lord, that we will live a life that is pleasing to you. That we will not be like the Pharisees. We will not be hypocrites. We have heard this word, O oh God, on that day, let it not stand against us. Let it not be that you knew that what you are doing is wrong. And you heard the word and you continue to do it. Let the word that we are hearing today, let it not stand against us in eternity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.